This is Joe Riccio. Did you know you can catch him on Patreon? You can find me at Love Engine Maine. Love Engine dot me. Yeah, it's perfect. I know you're hungry. I know you're upset. Welcome to Fukoma My 70s Kitchen, coming straight to you from My 70s Kitchen. I'm Joe Riccio. Uh, today we are joined by a special guest, Ashley McLaughlin. Uh, you may know her on Instagram as the Beer Mama, uh, which makes me the Wine Papa. And <laughs> I'm just going to roll with that. That's how we're going to do it from here on out. And that's just what it's going to be. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of uh, a multiple part episode that sort of revolves around main food and interesting twists kind of put on that. Uh, and I, you know, I figured, cause you have all these main theme tattoos. Yeah, I do. You know, it's, you'd be a perfect person to, you know. Well, also the whole like promoting main beer and main business thing too. Yeah, but the that tattoos helps. more than that yeah, though, whatever. I think. Yeah, I think but the, you're sick tattoos. Yeah, but the tattoos are really are the what best I'm, things. That's what I'm focused on <laughs> more than helping people. Yes. Essentially. <laughs> so we're going to be doing a few things, but uh, today's episode we're going to do uh, we're gonna break out some caviar, just like they would have in a Robert McCloskey book, like Mornings in Maine. You know, they really just wanted to have caviar and vodka in that book, but they didn't. Uh, we don't have the vodka, but we're gonna, you know, take it up a notch. Caviar. And we have the caviar, and I'm we have some beer. Excited. Yeah, and, and Ashley's never had caviar. I've never before. had caviar before. So, and per usual, my burner is out of control. <laughs> and I, I have, you know, no idea if we're gonna actually burn these. So what we're gonna do, the whole main element comes from ploys. So these are buckwheat pancakes. Uh, they're an Acadian uh, tradition, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, generally up, up in, you know, our flower comes from Bouchard Farms in Fort Kent. Uh, up there, they, you know, they film it with everything from, you know, Riettes or, uh, you know, Nutella. Um, I guess Cretone and Riette were the same thing. It's yeah. like pork spread, essentially. I misdiagnosed it when I was up there visiting with them, saying it was pork fat. Apparently, they use lean or pork now. Oh, okay. And then she died. She she made the correct assessment that because I was really fat, that I obviously didn't know about lean pork. So <laughs> and, and she's right. She's actually very right. So because uh, I am the wine papa, I am not as versed in what beers to go with all these things. I know everybody from Maine loves beer. Ashley has agreed to pair up some Allagash beers with these courses, who obviously we love. They are a friend of the show. And uh, not just because they're a friend of the show, because their beers are delicious. I don't care. Oh my care. God, it's so good. It doesn't matter. All of it. Yeah, like they could literally like have attacked me in the street and I'd be like, okay, fine, we'll still feature your beer. Rob Todd care. could punch me in the face and I would be like, I probably deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Rob, so sorry, Rob. Rob Todd said so, I'm just, I just, <laughs> I, I, I must have been out of line. If Rob Todd punched me, I must have really <laughs> deserved it. Ashley, what happened? I fell down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, Rob <laughs> Dunn. But yes, so um, you asked me to create some pairings for what we're filming today, and I've never had caviar before, so this one was really challenging. Yeah. And typically what we would pair with something like this would probably be an amber ale, something with a lot of really nice malty sweetness. Mm -hmm. um, but I was at the store and I panicked and I, for I forgot an amber ale. So yeah. instead, we're gonna try what you're making with um, Allagash North Sky, which is a really beautiful, silky, light-bodied Belgian stout. Okay. And I think that the malt in this beer is really gonna help us out with this dish, I hope. Mm -hmm. um, well, sweet and salty. So yeah, like exactly. Caviar we'll is see. Salty. Well, my, so the wild card here is like the, the yeast esters because it gives off some like kind of like spicy type notes. Yeah. And then on the flip side of that, we also have Allagash Triple because I've never had caviar, so I don't know what I'm doing with this pairing. Yeah. And um, but it's beautiful. So you when know, in doubt, sweet. go just high alcohol yeah. and big. When and, in yeah. doubt, just um, drink a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that's. I want to say it's served me well, but I just don't know anymore. I mean, historically, um, it has not that philosophy has not served me oh, well. It's not. That's okay. We're not here that's, to have a. That's this a isn't discussion a, for a different show. This is not show. a therapy session. We're gonna make some caviar pancakes. So Ashley's gonna pour us some beer now. While I I mind the stepchildren here. I mind the uh, the ploys. It's great because all it needs is basically just water, tourmaline spring water. That's what you should use. Uh, mixed with the flour, then you cook it in the butter. And these pancakes are really interesting because you're not supposed to flip them. You're supposed to actually let them cook all on one side and then they bubble up enough that you know, they kind of come together on their own. And there's a shit ton of butter in this pan, as you can see. So I'll let you get to the important stuff. And okay. 
I'm going to use my ghetto uh, ladle here, which is not from a local company. <laughs> you can lie and say, say it was. Yeah. Okay. So you know, my understanding of French Canadian cooking is that it definitely has all the elements of what its traditional like French parent is, but it's in a like a heartier, like more substantial version of mm -hmm. the thing. Is that accurate? I think so. Yeah, because like this is basically a crepe, but it's a heartier crepe, right? It's buckwheat. It's buckwheat. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's thin like a heartier like a crepe. crepe. Yep. You know, and then we see a lot of like um, like meat like meat pies and stuff in French Canadian mm -hmm. cooking, so it definitely seems like a heartier. It's more practical. It's yeah. Like, it's like Mainers for French Canadians. We're all very practical. It's like very hearty and practical. Yeah, we're yeah. all hearty and practical. Like I can't wait to get out there and shovel snow and, and just be an outdoorsman. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. <laughs> favorite thing to do. Absolutely fantastic. So I actually love this beer. It's so nice. It's really, really roasty. There's lots of coffee, there's yeah. malt, but it's so light and delicate mm -hmm. at the same time. And that makes it great with food because it doesn't kind of just overpower and just trample over everything that you're having with no. with with your beer. That's definitely they a should breakfast talk together. Beer. They shouldn't yell over each other. That's true. Yeah. I tend to drink a lot more wine these days than beer, but these are the ones that I still appreciate yeah. you know, when it comes down to it. And the Allagash House yeast in this is so nice and nuanced too. And it just pr provides like this additional kind of um, like thread in the fabric of all the flavors that are playing around in this beer. I just, I love everything Allagash does. So our ploys here, uh, as I said, the whole key with them is to not, you don't flip them necessarily. Uh, you wanna let them kind of keep bubbling up. Generally, as our friend Babish always says, there's always a sacrificial pancake, usually the first one. Uh, I'm kind of banking on these guys right here. Uh, and when they start getting enough bubbles in them, we can check the other side and then we can kind of, we, we can pull them and then hopefully get our, uh, I was gonna call this a caviar burrito, but I don't know how to roll a burrito. So they might just become caviar ploy tacos, but the whole point is getting you some caviar. Taquitos. Ta well, that's right, taquitos. Yeah. We have some, uh, from Sopo Seafood, we have uh, two kinds of caviar. We have some golden Ocetra and some regular Ocetra. So you're gonna be able to taste the difference between those two. Um, I've been eating caviar for a real long time. I worked at a place in Chicago uh, called Narcisse, which could have just been called um, Champagne and Drugs. Uh, and so I ate a lot of caviar there, but I couldn't really <laughs> taste it because I did so much Coke. Okay. But I learned a lot. <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> even when I'm up I remember things so like uh, for instance we have our mother of pearl spoons here you don't want to let metal touch caviar Why? you want uh, I don't know you just just believe what they say okay and uh, just don't even question it is it because it's like ooh peasants or is it because it's I think like, it's because like ooh, peasants I think it's peasants okay I was like tell me about that reaction it may it's react not, it's just you know it's caviar. Okay. I think you just want to like and also you don't get stoned and use this to eat ice cream because they break <laughs> really easily, I found out. Um, they're also good for, you know, but we don't, you know, that's not a, it's a family show. So we're not to talk about a that. Show. This is a family show. <laughs> this is like the family feud. Um, if the family feud ended very it's a family badly. Family show, there's no drugs, the, just alcohol. If the family feud ended horribly with, you know, lawsuits and violence, that's what this show is like, essentially. So normally, employees, you gotta kind of eyeball them. I mean, they say a minute to a minute and a half on the cook, but uh, I made these kind of big because I wanted some more real estate for our all the other things we're gonna add to it. Um, but what you really wanna look for is more of the, all this bubbly nonsense over here. If you don't have caviar spoons, you shouldn't be eating caviar. Oh, look at those. Look at these guys. They're starting to, Perfect. Starting to loosen up. Do you like really want tacos? Because you want burritos, tacos, yeah, like a I think tortilla. I well, there's, 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 we're just going to say it's from, Me it's from Mexico, Maine. It's from that's, Mexico, Maine. You know, that's, that's how we're going to do it. So we're going to do it again all day. I'm setting a lot of... I'm this already, is the Maine Foods episode. I'm already just making a lot of Mexican. rules for somebody who hates rules. See how those are starting to definitely firm up there? Yeah, mm -hmm. those are good. All right, we're going to pull those with our equally ghetto spatula because it's non-stick. You don't want to use... A metal spatula and a nonstick pan. You want to use like you know Fisher Price My First Kitchen spatula uh, all day long. So we're gonna put that guy and its friend okay. right over here. And I think you know what? We're gonna let that hang out for a second. 
I will make all of you guys caviar burritos later. You don't even really need the burrito. Honestly, I could, I've sat in my car on so many occasions and just housed a, a tin of this by itself. I love, I, I love it. And traditional caviar accompaniments are a hard boiled egg, chopped up, uh, some chives, which I have chopped like a complete amateur, but that's fine because that's kind of what I am. And uh, creme fraiche. Uh, when you go to the uh, grocery store to get creme fraiche, uh, these days apparently you have to watch out because you can get vanilla <laughs> creme fraiche by accident because some asshole was like, oh, let's put the vanilla bean in there. You know what we and should do? Put vanilla you know what we should do? Fresh. Everybody up. We should really just get a hidden camera in people's houses so when they get home and they're like, what the f dude? Like, they're like, we should make vanilla. 20, 20, 20, just like so much more difficult. Unbelievable. Um, horseshit. You know what? I almost want to leave. So just upset. your own kitchen. <laughs> I'm going to leave my own house. Out your own you know what? Door. I'm just going to go and I'm going to run away from my own house and I'll get food when I can and I'm just going to run and I'm going to run and I'm going to run. This is my show now. This is... <laughs> so meet your new host. Hello, I am Joe Riccio. <laughs> yeah, you Welcome are. To my 70s kitchen. You don't need to use my mispronounced name. You can just be whatever you are. I love Crim Fresh. Yeah. So much. Crim Fresh is secret weapon. <laughs> so we got a little chopped egg happening here. Okay. Okay. We're going to start with the regular Ocetra caviar. Again, from Sopo, see if you see those pearls. Uh, there are generally three kinds of Russian or, you know, Iranian caviar. Uh, there's Beluga, Ocetra, and Savruga. Uh, beluga, I used to eat a lot back in the day, but it's become an endangered species since, so you can't really find beluga anymore, I don't think. Um, Ocetra, though, I prefer because actually it's a smaller egg. Uh, belugas were a little larger. And Savruga is perfectly fine, but I think these are the definitely the way to go. And you want to do a portion that's, you know, like you mean it. Your first time with caviar, mm -hmm. I want you to have a shitload of it. Okay. Uh -huh. So yeah, the world's most decadent pancake. The only thing we could do to make it more decadent is be an asshole and add a uh, gold flake to it. I was just gonna say, put, put a little gold leaf on top. You know, but just I'm just always like, okay, $2, that's like ploy. cheating. They're like, it's expensive because I had a gold flake, and you're like, yeah, but I could technically like, I could serve it on a hundred dollar bill and call yeah. it expensive. <laughs> like it doesn't matter. Like gold flake doesn't taste like anything. Here's the completed uh, caviar pancake, which we're actually gonna with forks rather than uh, pick up because it made the ploys really big, but you can do whatever you want. Um, traditionally, uh, toast points, blini, which is a Russian uh, kind of uh, potato pancake, uh, all work for this. Um, but because when you're handling a mother load of caviar like this, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you might need a fork for it. So okay. dig in. I'm very excited. I think it's going to be good. And if it's terrible, not my fault. Okay. <laughs> it's the caviar's fault. It's the, ca yeah, it's the caviar's fault. Okay. All right. I need more crumb fresh. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, I can 100% get down with caviar. Mm. Oh, right? hell yeah. Mm. It's That's so good. Right? Yeah, so good. We're not a linear here. We're <laughs> We're not about dainty presentation. We're about things that taste good, and that tastes delicious. That tastes really good. Like briny salted caviar, creamy creme fraiche, mm. also kind of creamy salty, uh, hard boiled eggs chopped up, a little bit of chive on the pancake. I mean, I eat those every morning if given the option. I would eat this every morning too. I get yeah. it. Yeah. I get it now. Yeah. It's not. Uh, it's not nice. just something that bougie people like for the sake of liking it. Like, it's actually delicious. And I like the texture of the boy. It is. It's like a, right. like a thin pancake. But yeah, the flavor is really nice, too. Mm-hmm. And again, you don't need to cook the other side. Like It helps that you cook them in so much butter. <laughs> so good. Well, you better get used to that. Cause... Butter is the best. Mm-hmm. Like, why would I be mad? Mm. And the one last thing we're going to do for a little contrast here is we're going to try the golden Ocetra. Okay. All right. So see, the golden's a little bit... Mm -hmm. A little bit different. Well, you can use a separate caviar spoon. I'll put some of this on your pancake over here. And now try that in contrast to 
Irregular. Definitely one of the stranger things that I've uh, had said to me. Hmm. I'm just going to put some caviar on your pancake. <laughs> you know what? You should be so lucky. Have somebody <laughs> to you every single day. Well, now, no, now I know why you're like sat in your car and eat whole jars of it with mm -hmm. your tiny spoon. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I don't care. I love it. It's like, it's funny because it gets included in that sort of pantheon of decadence with, you know, drugs and alcohol and, and whatnot. But it's really not conducive to either of those things, essentially. Actually, if you, people always say champagne and caviar, but I say vodka. Like, ice cold vodka. I was going to say, isn't vodka, vodka is like what it would drink. If you're the, if you're the, if vodka. you're Tsar Nicholas, you're drinking vodka with this. You're not drinking caviar, uh, champagne, excuse me. Um, but a lot of people do do caviar with it, and it's fine, mm. but it's kind of a waste. I mean, there's just so much flavor here that the just ice cold, like, you know, cutting hard liquor thing is nice to, you know, break through it. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so now you know what it's like to be a Russian czar. Now we just need a mob of peasants coming to murder us. Yeah, just like Full in Res circle. Just like Rasputin or just whatever. Like, no, Rasputin. He's in that movie with what's her face? Oh, Anastasia. Anastasia. Yes. That's her face. <laughs> <laughs> that is we our. We can figure uh, out something to like put this caviar on that's gonna match every beer I brought. This oh, I, I think so. Right? Now, now that you've tried it, it's shows over. Very We're just agreeable. eating caviar. And I think, like I said, if, if Robert mm -hmm. McCoskey was around now with us, it'd be mornings in Maine with caviar and ploys. <laughs> that's how he would roll all day long. It's so good. Thank you, Mr. McCloskey. <laughs> I'm Joe Riccio, and this is Ashton McLaughlin. Uh, and this is Fukoma, my 70s kitchen. If you want to see more, check out his OnlyFans. You're on. <laughs> <laughs> if you like me you saw today, like and subscribe to my uh, YouTube page at Joe Riccio. Also, check out our Patreon. It's uh, patreon.com slash Fukoma Podcast. And...